the Augustus band. And entering into a ship of Adramidium, we launched, meaning to sail, by the coast of Asia, when Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon. Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto the friends to refresh himself. You have to understand that Paul was a prisoner, but even the guard gave him the liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. In Acts chapter 27, now looking at verse 41, Paul knew, he said, if we take the next leg of this voyage, he said, everybody's lives are going to be in jeopardy. He said, there, there is no way that we can escape without the loss of, of life. And so they, they ignored, but the Lord sent an angel to speak to Paul and said that there will be no loss of life, that I am with you, I'm going to take care of you. And verse 41 is where I want to pick up this morning and falling into a place where two seas met. They ran the ship aground. And the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and go to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. We know that Paul had to go to this particular place because there would be a conversion as a result of a miraculous healing. A viper would latch onto his hand, he'd shake it off. And as a result, they would want to know about Jesus Christ and the power that was working through the Apostle Paul. I found it amazing in this time of Thanksgiving that I would be preaching to people this morning some on boards and some on broken pieces. That I would be ministering to people in a season of thanksgiving who have been fighting for your very existence in life. Who have been doing everything within your mind to keep your mind whole. But you are here today in a season of thanksgiving. And you have brought your brokenness into the presence of His holiness. And I've got good news to you, for you. Brokenness is what Christianity is all about. You look at us and we all look whole and we look intact. But we've had marital conflict. We have had broken dreams. We have had bankruptcies. We have had near-death experiences. We have lost loved ones. We have had to put precious loved ones in the ground. And in this life, the Bible says, you shall have tribulation. And I say it often, and I mean it. If the devil could take us out, could have killed us, could have caused us to lose our mind, we'd have already lost it. There there are some people that give the, the devil more credit than God himself. That the devil has the ability to move furniture and the devil has the ability to speak and look, if the devil had the ability to flicker lights, he would never stop flickering your light. If the devil had the ability to do bad things to you, you would already be dead. But what you are is you are in life and life can be very difficult and life can be very fragile and life can be very unfair 
And you can find yourself like them that what they was writing completely collapsed. And they were left to the sea. And they reached for whatever they could get a hold of. Some on planks, if you look up boards in the Greek. Some on planks. Some just on broken pieces of planks. But whatever I can get my hand on, he said, grab it. Because nobody's going to die now. I want to tell you, feel like death. You feel like giving up. There's times that you have felt like surrender. But I want to tell you, some on boards and some on broken pieces. But everybody made it to the other side. I want to tell you, I want to go ahead and tell you the story before I tell you the story. I'm going to give you the rest of the story at the beginning. You're going to make it. God's going to help you. God's going to strengthen you. God's going to anoint you. Oh yes, some of you, the very thing that you have been riding has fallen to pieces. The very thing that bore you up now has let you down. But I've got good news in this Thanksgiving season. God has spoken to a preacher just as an angel was sent to the Apostle Paul and said, tell him, Nobody's going to lose their life. Nobody's going to lose their salvation. Nobody is going to die lost without God. I am going to give them everything they need. I'm not going to die in this dilemma. I'm not going to die in this difficulty. Would you help me just a moment? Start thanking God for helping you when you cannot help yourself. Thank you for sending an angelic word. Thank you for sending a messenger. Let me be that messenger to somebody. That messenger was sent to the apostle. I've seen your fasting. I've seen your prayer. Something amazing. I started to call this the 14th day. But that possibly will be for another time. But can you imagine some of those prisoners had not eaten for 14 days? Representing the, the kingdom of God. Fasting. Not eating. He said, it's the 14th day you've not eaten. But he said, you need strength for the rest of your journey. Go ahead and eat. You're going to need strength. And then suddenly the ship fell apart. But some on boards. And some on broken pieces. But they had enough strength to grab a piece. And they held on. I feel the Holy Ghost already ministering to people in this building. And God is with you. God will provide all of your need according to His riches and glory. Think about these dear people. They were in an incarcerating situation for doing the right things. And some of you are in incarcerating position for doing the right things. You have become a prisoner. But I am here to tell you that God will help you and God will assist you. And no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. God's going to help you all the way through. Lift your hands one more time as the Spirit of the Lord has entered into this building. God is already speaking words to you. He's already speaking encouragement to you. He's already speaking faith to you. God bless you and you may be seated. In the book of Psalm chapter 31 to the chief musician, a psalm of David. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me and deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net 
that they have laid privately for me, for thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Notice David says, into thine hand I commit. There are seasons of life that none of us can predict. There are things that all of us could change or would change if we had the circumstance. But he said, Lord, you know where I'm at. You know the very address and my location. He said, into your hand I commit my spirit. In other words, Lord, I give you everything. My trust is in you. I cannot trust my own spirit. I am in a place where my spirit cannot even be trusted. But he said, I commit my spirit into your hand. David knew something about trust that God appreciated and valued. When he didn't feel like the king that he was, when he didn't feel like he earned or was worthy of the blessing of God, still he would trust in God and not lean upon his own understanding. He said, into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O God of truth. He said, I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. In other places you would see that some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but he said, I will Trust in the name of the Lord. Not just for now, but forever I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to trust Him. Job teaches us a very powerful lesson that I will trust him, with him when I cannot trace Him. I will worship and praise Him when I cannot feel Him. I will give Him my heart when I don't feel that God is near. If I feel within my own self internally that God has somehow left the premise and is not here, he said, I know that he knows the way that I take. And I trust him when I cannot trace him. And I have faith in him when I cannot feel him. And I know that God is real and God is divine and God is holy and he will never leave me nor forsake me. That he will be with me in my entire life. That sometimes in my emptiness, I cannot see the doubling that God has in store for me. In my emptiness and in my brokenness, I cannot see the future that God has laid out for me. And like David, some of you have found yourself in a collision course with feeling the empty weight of maybe even your own inadequacies or your own failures. But David said, when I cannot trust myself, I know I can trust you. When I cannot trust my emotions, when I cannot trust my feelings, when I cannot trust whether or not I could even get myself into your presence where I can feel you, I know that I can trust you to take care of my soul. Because you are in the soul business. Whether I can feel it or whether I don't feel it, I know you have the best interest of my soul at heart. We don't always, we can't always see it. We can't always feel it. David said this, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. Because thou has considered my trouble. See, what the Apostle Paul did not know, they were not on that that ship all by themselves. That the consideration of their trouble had already been considered by Almighty God. And God knew in their times of incarceration that there would be things out of their control. They could not affect the elements. They could not predict whether or not there would be a storm. They could not predict whether or not it would be safe selling or or rough seas. They could not determine the elements. But it didn't matter. 
Because they had put their trust totally in Jesus Christ. And when they could not help themselves, they were leaning not upon their own understanding nor looking to their own ability to save themselves. But they were looking to God and God alone. And God says, I see them though they don't know I see them. And I will make a way of escape. The fortunate thing for all of them, even the evil men that were their persecutors and prosecutors, what was an amazing thing is God had the people of God and their best interest at heart. And when he saved them, he would even save the others and evil men that did not deserve it. Can I say today that your house is blessed? Not because everybody in it's blessed, but it's blessed because of your faithful trust to Jesus Christ. They don't even realize the blessing that is upon the house because of what you bring inside of it your trust and your faithfulness to God. And God saw it and said, you're going to be rescued as a result of their faith. And so an angel spoke. He said, communicate immediately. Get into the ears of the preacher that nobody's dying today. They're going to have to put forth a little effort. They're going to have to pick, pick, pick themselves up. They're not just going to be able to jump into the water and not swim. If they don't know how to swim, they will at least have to dog paddle until their hand can brush up against a piece that can hold them up when they can't hold themselves up. They're at least going to have to reach out for the plank that comes floating by them. But if they'll get on a board or if they'll get on a broken piece, I'll take them all the way to the seashore. Oh my, I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. Some of you, Satan has already shouted at your funeral. He has already talked about your demise. He has already said there's no hope for him in God. But I've got good news. Even though what you're riding on falls, falls to pieces, if you'll reach your hand up, there's going to be a plank come floating by. If you can get your hand on the plank, you're going to live again. If you can get, I don't have anything, preacher, but broken pieces in my life. My life is shattered. Reach up and get a hold of a broken piece and float your way to the shore. You're about to have a miracle. There's about to be a manifestation. God's about to help you. Now you're going to have to make an effort. You're going to have to make a better deal to get beyond the bankruptcy. But the broken piece may be the very thing that saves you. The broken piece. You know what I found in the Old Testament? That God allowed the wound of an enemy to come to one of the people of God. Because nobody knew the wound of sin that was already in their life. But he let the enemy wound them so they could be saved. The broken piece literally became a salvation. The broken part that made them cry out to God that says, I cannot do this by myself. The brokenness that said, God, you've got to forgive me and wash me and cleanse me became the very thing that saved them. Do you know what I'm trying to say? There are people under the sound of my voice that thought I can live any way I want to live. I don't have to live for God. Your mom and dad taught you to serve God with all of your heart, but you were hard-headed and stubborn, and there was a day you said, Mom, don't pray for me anymore. Leave me alone. But you went out into a world, and you started riding on some things, and all of a sudden it started falling to pieces. Your life started falling to pieces. But in the midst of those fallen pieces, you cried out to God. And God rescued you. And God saved you. The adversity was the very thing that brought wholeness back to your broken life. 
There are many that are in this building today that know I reached an adversity. I thought I could do it by myself, but in the midst of my problem, I found a solution. I found God in a deeper dimension. Oh, look, I know the devil's trying to destroy you. I know he's trying to tell you there's no hope for you in God. I know he's trying to tell you you have no future, but it's in this pain. If you'll cry out to God beyond your pain, there is a God that you can trust when you cannot trace. You can, you can have faith in him when you don't feel him. All you have to know is God's going to help me in this dilemma. He's going to help me in this crisis. He's going to help me overcome. I'm not dying in this dilemma. It's amazing when you look to the Word of God. David begins to make it very, very clear. He said, And I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities. That rung a bell in me. That God, you know my soul in adversity. It's my soul that you have coveted to save. It is my soul. And when my soul gets in an adverse circumstance, in an adverse situation, you know the complexity of what my soul is dealing with. You know what I am going through internally. You know what is destroying and taking me apart. But then he said, I was a reproach. Among mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. Why? Because I had failed. I had made a mistake. I was a reproach. People began to push me away as if I don't exist anymore. David said, isolated in my failure. He said, this is the way I felt. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I'm a dead man. I'm out of mine. I've lost my mind, and I'm no longer in anybody's mind. I'm forgotten. And then he makes a very classic statement. He said, I am like a broken vessel. I can't hold anything. My heart is broken. My life is broken. My dreams are broken. I am a broken individual. I have nowhere to look up. I I am empty. I need God in my life. Can you imagine that a king could get to the place that he says, I am like a broken vessel. He said, for I've heard the slander of many. I know what they're saying about me. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life, but I trusted in thee. O Lord, and said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. He said, my times are in your hands. My good times are in your hands. My bad times are in your hands. Some of you have said, I I can't continue in God as if 20 years of living for God doesn't matter. One mistake does not make you who you are. It doesn't change who you are. It doesn't keep you from being who you are. He said, "My God knows my times. He knows every investment. He knows my labor of love. He knows my sacrifice. He knows when I was hot and he knows when I was cold. He knows when I was in and he knows when I was out. He knows my times and my times are in your hand David said but I have trusted in you when I could not trust myself I have trusted in your mercy I have trusted in your grace I have trusted 
in the safety of your pavilion. I have sa- I have trusted. I, folks, I, I want to tell you it's very easy to get a critical fr- finger of judgment and walk throughout the house of God and say, check, check, X, check, X, X. But such were some of you, but you have been sanctified. You have been delivered. You have been washed by the blood of Almighty God. Some on boards and some on broken pieces, but all have been covered by the blood of the Lamb. I feel like preaching a little bit this morning. If people can't be put back to, together in church, where in the world can they put back? be put back together? If people can't be restored in the kingdom of God, where in the world can they be restored? If marriages can't be put back together, I'm telling you by the fear of Almighty God, I stand before you trembling, but I pray that every marriage could be put back together. I pray that every broken home could be put back together. I pray that every wayward husband could be delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray for every adulterous woman and every adulterous man. And folks, you can't walk in a house like this and can't see people that just made it by a board or a broken piece. If we put everybody's sin up up there and begin to put their name beside it, this is what he did in 1970. And this is what he did in 1982. And this is what he did in 1986. And this is what he watched in 1994. And this is how he lied in 2001. And this is how he deceived people in 2007. Boy, I feel like preaching. And we want to take a stone and kill somebody? And David said, I'm a broken vessel. I've heard what everybody's saying. But God, my hope and my help comes from you. You've got to help me. If you don't help me, it's over. If you don't put me back together, it's over. If I can't trust you to forgive me, it's over. If I can't trust you to help me, it's over. But early this morning, David goes from singing about himself to singing about others. It is an amazing song. He said, Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I'm cut off before thine eyes. I'm sorry, God, I spoke too soon. I thought you had walked away from me. But I didn't realize that your eyes never left my brokenness. Your eyes never lost. You never left my empty situation. You never took your eyes off of me. When I failed, you had your eyes on me. When I confessed and admitted, you had your eyes on me. You've never taken your eyes off of me. Your eyes have been on me. You've watched over me. You have helped me. And he said... Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful, plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. But if I could offer you anything that ministered to me the other day, he said, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. David said, be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. I don't trust myself anymore. I can't trust my own judgment, but I can trust you. Lord, I'm not thinking straight. I'm not seeing straight. I'm not evaluating straight, but I can trust you. When I cannot see you, I can trust you. I can trust you. And 
I might end up to heaven's pearly gates on the shore of that eternal city. I might come floating in on a plank or a broken piece. But I'm holding on to every bit of hope that you've ever given to me. I'm going to trust you when I can't feel you. And I'm going to believe you. And in this time of thanksgiving, I have come to love you and to honor you and to bring my brokenness to you because my brokenness feeds you. My brokenness is what feeds you. It's not my arrogance, not my pride, not my self-sufficiency. But when I tell you, God, I'm trusting you. I'm empty. I'm like a broken vessel. When I admit that my dependence is not upon myself, but upon you, that's what feeds you. That's what makes you move on my behalf. When I say, I can't take it anymore. I'm like a broken vessel. You've got to help me. If you don't help me, if you don't heal me, if you don't save me, if you don't deliver me, would you stand all over this building? And he moves into the next song. It says, blessed is he. And David now starts singing about himself again. Because he was the murderer. He was the adulterer and he knew it. He said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old. Though my roaring... All the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. And then he said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And thine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely... In the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh him. The waters that were meant to destroy. God found a way to give them a board and a broken piece so that the storm of their life would not overcome them and destroy them. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every time a message from God is preached... It means something to a different hearer. Every hearer hears differently. But the message that God is speaking is I have seen your despair. I have seen your brokenness. I have seen your emptiness. And like David, some have said I'm broken like a vessel. I'm an empty vessel. Yes.
These altars are open. Musicians, come quickly. The Lord is ready to receive your brokenness. He knows everything that you're going through. I want you to just step out into the aisles. Come quickly to the front. Bring your broken pieces. Bring your empty vessel. Bring your disappointments, your disillusionments. And come and open the door and let Jesus come in right now. Would you come all the way to the front? If you feel like kneeling, if, if you feel like burying your face in the carpet, whatever you feel like doing, but everybody, come and find a place of prayer. You're going to make it.